We have risen from the ashes to school the masses. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Scholars of Wrestling show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 300 of the Scholars of Wrestling show. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm a man behind the microphone, Scholar Jeff. With going down the quick roll call, we're going to go to the current reigning and defending Scholars of Wrestling party champion, Scholar Tarek. Scholar Tarek, how are you doing tonight, sir? I am feeling absolutely like on cloud run, cloud nine right now. Right now, you're right, fool. We have once again risen from the ashes for the three hundredth time. Three hundred times we risen from the ashes to continue and school the masses, schooling however we can. Sometimes being schooled ourselves, but. Damn, it feels good to reach number three, zero, zero. Oh, yes. The road to scholarship is not a flawless one, but it is does go ever on and on. Mm -hmm. Just as in the case of also joining us tonight, the one and only and new Scholars of Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion, the one and only, the always delightful Scholar Brian. Scholar Brian, how are you doing tonight, sir? Pretty good. It is an honor to represent my fellow scholars on the 300th episode as your new reigning, possibly defending, <laughs> oh. undisputed scholars of wrestling champion. Possibly. Defending, well, but uh, it, will it come doesn't soon. matter how it came to be. All that matters is that it happened, and it is, and it is an honor. But it's also kind of bittersweet because, of course, as soon as I become the champion, uh, the entire wrestling industry falls apart at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. so what you're saying, Brian, it's all your fault. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything, uh, everything well, that's happening in the world right now is my oh. fault. <laughs> oh, well, believe me, we're going to get all into that, but we cannot proceed any further without introducing the fourth and final member of this sordid little soiree, the always entertaining. Scholar Charlie. Scholar Charlie, how are you doing tonight, sir? Thank you with that heartfelt introduction. It's been a week of up and ups and downs. Cried a little bit on Sunday watching uh, Last Ride Part 5, as I'm sure you and Brian did as well. Tarek hasn't watched it yet. So we're here to spoil that for you tonight. <laughs> hey, well, there's really not too much to spoil the big announcement. Social media will... spoiled it already for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. And within five off... minutes, within five minutes of it happening, <laughs> it was already out there. And the result, emotional... yes. And then I went on the emotional roller coaster that is uh, The Last of Us Part Two, which had me in tears by Wednesday morning when I finished it. So it's been a, quite the emotional week. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, well, we got a to whole here, you guys to include me on episode three hundred. Well, I, I at least you don't have to cry this time because I didn't pull my shit on you again this year, Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> so at at least you get at least you can. You don't have to deal with that at the same time as what you just said. <laughs> well, just for the sake of clarity, at this point, Brian. Just for the sake of clarity at this point, uh, let's cover real quick. Let's cover the aftermath of WWE backlash because we for a while there, we just had big show after big show after big show. And Scholar Brian, where did that leave you at the end of WWE backlash two weeks ago? You know, I went into it with low, 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 low expectations. And I actually think that helped it out a little bit because I knew going in, okay, the greatest wrestling match ever was not going to be 
the greatest wrestling match ever. And going into it with that kind of expectation, okay, yeah, it went a little long. As Edge versus Randy Orton matches always do. If you go back through the annals of time, there hasn't been one that didn't go 30 minutes. <laughs> That's it. But it's one of those... I I was watching your guys' Twitters all night. And I got to say, I don't agree. I actually enjoyed that match. I enjoyed it a lot. I I know I of as as everybody says the piped in crowd noise was a little much, but just going off of the content in the match itself, okay. I th- I thought it was really good. I didn't think it outstayed its welcome. I I there was not a point in the match where I was like end it already. This was not like the WrestleMania match, where about 20 minutes in, I'm like, this is stupid. Why are we still here? What are you doing? Why are you going into another room? (laughs) That kind of thing. But does it... So it's... and, And based off of that, everything else kind of fell in line, where it's like my expectations were so low that the that there was no way that a match could do any worse than what I was expecting. So mm. based on that level alone, okay, I'm going to go just based off of enjoyment and watching it going and, in with and Alex, coming away with the title. Honestly, even if even if it didn't happen, I would still give it this grade. Okay, it helps a lot. It helped in the enjoyment at the end a lot. But even still, I would go a little full beard. Because the, the going in with very low expectations doesn't... It's not hard to fulfill them and go over what you thought you were going to get. I thought that the entire card was going to be shit. Okay. And that didn't happen. So therefore, yay. <laughs> That's it. All right. Uh, let's get some more ratings. Uh, Scholar Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> Scholar Charlie. What overall thoughts on backlash and final beard rating for the show? I'll make it short and sweet. Um, I went in thinking it was going to be a fairly predictable event. Uh, it ended up being a fairly predictable event. Um, we were only off by what the double count out. Me the and Brian. Count. Yep. Yeah. So that would have been my first perfect card since uh, since what was that Washington D.C. one with our truth and John Cena? Capital oh, punishment. Wow. Capital, <laughs> Capital punishment. That would have been my first. Wow. Perfect. Talk about your throwbacks. <laughs> yes, with that being said, I uh, I thought the order of the card was really, really intelligently put together. It had a good it it, it ran smoothly. Um and there was a garbage monster. Let's not look over the garbage monster. Yes. We will never look past monster. the garbage monster. Yeah. <laughs> Had there not been a garbage monster, I might have rated it lower, but I'm along with Brian with the full beard on this one. <laughs> The garbage monster yeah. puts it over the top. I agree, sir. Hey, if it worked <laughs> for Star Wars, it works for us. We did get a garbage monster, and I think that's just as good. If it works for Star Wars, it's good enough for me. <laughs> Scholar Tarek, do you concur? I do concur. Uh, garbage monsters for the win. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I will, I will agree with what everyone else saying going into this event, which. Pretty much was just very low expectations, and it was just basically a filler show, le- building up for just it's the end of the Paul Heyman era, starting of the Vince McMahon slash Bruce Pritchard era, and all in all, it actually what I actually did enjoy the show. The only nitpick I had was the double countout, which is a bu- was a bullshit call because. Just how I feel now. I feel Asuka needs to 
show herself as a strong champion, and I just don't think they put her in a position to do that. So, But that's just one of the many things that I really have problems storyline-wise when it comes to WWE. But, but yeah, the, the greatest match! Uh, it, was, it was very good. It was a very good match, but we knew these guys were going to put on a good match. My only problem... Yeah, I, unlike Brown, I actually did have a problem with the length. It actually, for me, it's like the content wasn't bad. It was just reached that point where I'm looking at my watch and just thinking, is it is it over yet? But after I actually watched that match again, now knowing what the length was and now with that, it actually did boost it back up for me. Um, going in, I knew I was going to lose the title either with – either tying it, tying and Brian cashing in or Brian winning and cashing in. But for the first part, I knew that there was also a chance that Brian was not going to cash in and that beefcase was going to stick around a little longer. So at this point, I don't care. I didn't care that I lost the belt because there's just so many times I can actually win, win something I've won before. There's so many accomplishments that I don't need to win now because I already won them all. So I already I, I already gave it to my my BFF <laughs> my, they, my my scholars tag team partner and Brian. So all right, Charlotte Flair, let's go. <laughs> That's uh, it. <laughs> hey, I I am I'm pr- I'm pretty much that guy on the Scholars of Wrestling show. That I, I don't wear I don't wear this suit jacket just to look pretty, which I already know it already does make me look pretty, but. But yeah, I wouldn't. I don't mind dropping it to my scholars tag team partner and scholar Brian. Mm-hmm. The I'm just really happy that now, when I win it back, whenever that's going to be, if it's from Brian or from either Charlie or Jeff, I just not will now know. There's no beefcase stopping me from continuing my title reign and the return He's of Tara to the belts. Cena. He's the John Cena to my Randy Orton. <laughs> we'll go, you know what? I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah. we, and we do have, and we have that love hate relationship that just, especially going after all these uh, episodes, just keep it going. I love it. We, we just have that love hate relationship that just knows no end, but back to backlash. I'm going to give it, I'm also going to give it a four out of five full beard. It was a very, it was a very entertaining show. All right. Well, in the spirit of being not intentionally contrarian, but contrarian all the same, there was a lot to like here, but because it wasn't where I expected it to be. Again, I didn't expect the garbage monsters. I didn't expect to enjoy the greatest wrestling match ever to the extent that I did. So I, I can't, it's not a bad show, but I can't justify r- rating it quite as high as you two. Therefore, my score is going to be a 3.5. One, two, you, you forgot. Three. You forgot one, Jeff. You said two. There's three here. <laughs> what I say? You, you said two. You said two. Okay, Who are three. you leaving out? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, my score is three out of five. Uh, a classic goatee, but a really strong, bushy classic goatee. <laughs> Clearly, oh. the garbage monster didn't have the same impact on you that it did on us, but that's all right. <laughs> hey, hey, Star Wars did first. Star Wars did best. Okay, garbage that's monster all gets an extra. Be- it gets extra beard. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> all right. Now we got through the status of the Scholars of Wrestling Championship. Now. Now we must do move on to the rest of the show proper, which unfortunately there was a fair bit of disturbing and a distressing news this week. <clears throat> and we really need to cover it all. So let's get right out of the way in a little segment we like to call a backstage news. Indeed, we shall go once again for the 300th time. Look behind that curtain and really nothing's really changed, has it? No. Yeah, might as well just go ahead and continue and check in on that little backstage news. 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 Everything sucks, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really does. 
Okay, so on that delightful note, uh, <laughs> let's yeah, let's kick it off with the best Amer with the one and only American way of sexual abuse allegations. Oh. <laughs> and that's I like how you set that up, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. So again, well, let's face it, it he's not wrong. <laughs> yeah, and let's be real again about this. Let's keep it totally real here. This not only is his situation and the developments constantly outgoing, a laundry list of accusations from all across the board, from the irritating to the super serious and severe. There's been a lot of allegations to try and keep track of, and there's been a lot of really emotionally heavy laden uh, feedback from all of this. The the feedback seems to be changing and updating and the responses keep changing day by day by day. Uh, so in just a hundred words or less, pretty much, uh, let's go down the road and just see, talk about, I guess, starting with, let's go with you, Tarek. What was your experience as these things rolled out? What was your response and what what do you think about the response that the wrestling world has given to the state of the business at large? Well, initially, when I first heard about it, I kind of really wasn't surprised at all, even considering like with people we know in the wrestling world and just uh, just stories you hear and just basically just video interviews throughout history. I, I just keep thinking of, um, oh, God, I'm blanking on his name. Yeah. Talk, slapping the one reporter who said it was fake. Oh. Uh, terrible. I'm terrible with names. Was it uh, but, uh, David Schultz? I believe so, yeah. Uh, just just uh, see, knowing the long history that basically the wrestling world, as we've basically grown to see backstage and how we just – are now more critical knowing that's what we, what we do on the show and just knowing all the history that it had. It's again, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised of all the allegations coming out. It's just, it's sad that seeing some of the names that have been announced and, and just thinking this really is, it's not just WWE. It's everywhere. AEW, the independents, uh, the independent circuit and I'm just I'm glad it's not it's just, it's just seeing some of the allegations from both men, women like the uh, I think the one that actually caught me off uh, the most was uh, when TJ Perkins came out and he talked about all this the stuff that happened to him when he was when he was younger uh yeah. And hearing, and Sammy Guevara, his allegations, and then you sending sending us the video of when he was at the performance center and calling Lacey Evans baby, or babe. At that point, I'm just like, dude, you, you are on such a high note right now. It's, and especially, and you gained so much points for me after the Stadium Stampede match. Now it kind of, I wouldn't necessarily say, necessarily said it, it hurts my view of it because I still thoroughly enjoy that match. <laughs> Excuse me. But I'm glad that people are speaking out. I'm glad that we're trying to get rid of this nasty taste that is in this, that's in this world. And when people outside the world how they look inside professional wrestling it's not surprising because now with all these allegations yeah it is a kind of, it is a disgusting world and i'm i can't wait for all these allegations to, for people to to wake up and realize this isn't this world anymore this is we're now working in a to make the wrestling world better for everyone Men, women, trans, bi, whatever. So, nothing else more to say. Is this, I just can't wait for the day when that day comes where 
we don't have to look at this world and just kind of be like, yeah, it's it's not a it's not a good world. And then I'm and then just also thinking about like when I, I it's another good example of look how this world looks is like when you look at the original Tough Enough series and just how like Bill Demott, Hardcore Holly always treated the the trainee like this the trainees trying to get in here and it's just again it's you're, you you basically you want to be in this one but if you're just basically beating that you have to be beating the shit out of it just leaves a nasty taste but it, mm. yeah I, I i don't really have more else to say other than hopefully this will make the wrestling world a better place to work for everyone mm-hmm uh, let's go to Scholar Brian on this one. Uh, reactions to how you, everything unfolded, and do you what do you think on the response that you've seen so far? It did. on the day that everything started coming out. Okay, I I forget which allegation came out first, and then it just started a David turn. Star. Uh, David Starr. Yeah, the uh, yeah he was the, the first Ray who I had never even heard of, by the way. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's the nothing. one that was trying to get the unions together. The he he was the he was the guy leading the charge to to try to set up a wrestlers union so that they wouldn't be pigeonholed into the WWE's independent contractor bullshit. So he was the one who started that. He's an indie guy, so if you're not into the indies, then you're not going to know. <laughs> That's it. So they so it started out with him, and then it was basically, for about a day, it was basically just UK guys. It was basically just UK guys getting getting thrown under the bus, and all this stuff is coming out, like Travis Banks, uh, Jordan Devlin, Guys that you would see on NXT UK, Jack Gallagher. Jack, but that did, well. I'm just going off the first day. Mm-hmm. Gallagher came out a little bit later, but the, just so it was just UK guys. And then that night was the Matt Riddle, and and uh, so that one was the first. Holy shit. Like I didn't expect that, <laughs> and then and and then they started going back and forth. But there's too many people who were witness to Matt Riddle's behavior during that time th- for me to completely believe what he was saying and all that. So it just it just kept coming, and and every day something new, and and then Sammy Guevara happened. And and that was basically okay. That started because him and Sasha Banks got into a little uh, got into a little Twitter banter over ratings quarter hours because they had the they had the same time slot last week, the Wednesday main event, and and uh, so Sasha Banks and Bailey their segment won that quarter hour. And and her Bailey and Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho were kind of going back and forth, bantering. And uh, I gotta say, you Sasha Banks fans, okay, you don't like any bad talk about her at all. Doesn't matter whether it's banter or not. <laughs> so someone got pissed, went back in time, found that interview. That he did. And yeah, it's fucked up. It is completely fucked up. No doubt. But I will say this. Okay. Out of everybody that had something come out against them this last weekend, Sammy Guevara is the only one who owned his shit. Mm-hmm. Owned his shit and was like, yeah. I fucked up. I'm going to I'm going to take care of this. What I'm I'm not going to make any excuses. 
I'm just going to take my consequences and we're going to try to move on from this, which, hey, gets him a little bit more respect for me than any than everybody else who was like, everything's untrue. None of this ever happened. And like 95 percent of those I could just look at you and go bullshit because the wrestling business is run like an old boys club where the men and the old timers and the ones in that special group can do whatever to feel like they can do whatever the fuck they want and can get away with it. And that used to be true. But now in the age of social media and and everything that's going on right now, not so much. So... Sammy Guevara, even though he made the fucked up comments that he did and all that, very messed up, can't, don't agree with it whatsoever. You can't say shit like that ever. And uh, I don't even like it in a private setting as a joke. And you're going to say it in an in- to a guy in an interview. Yeah, you deserve whatever you get, but at least you fucking owned your shit and you're getting it taken care of. So you get some props from me for that at the very least. But it's not over. It's ongoing. More shit's going to come out, obviously. And uh, some people are going to get what's coming to them. Joey Ryan, mm. never going to work again. Probably going to go to jail if the, if some, if some if people... Have enough courage to have enough courage to go to the cops and press charges. But well, it's obviously not that surprising with a guy who uses his yeah. using wrestling move around his penis. It's dark. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I hate you. Like, like, <laughs> like, who didn't see that one coming? <laughs> Charlie, did I steal your joke? You stole yeah. a lot of my material right there. Yeah. And. and, and <laughs> And Velveteen Dream, okay, the, the WWE is already talking about getting rid of him now. I uh, oh. so that so careers wasted, young careers wasted because uh, you feel that you are in the right to do shit that no one should ever do. So it's time to clean up. It's time to clean up the wrestling business. And if you're doing dumb shit. Okay, you're gonna get called out on it, and you're gonna go. And and as much as I like Velveteen Dream, as much as I like, as as much as I thought that Matt Riddle was the next big was the next big thing, if it comes out that it's true that he did what he was accused of, fuck that guy, get him out of here. So. But, a lot of a lot of things are going to be going down in the next few weeks and I'm all for it at this point this the the re- wrestling the the wrestling business is on a complete fucking downer for me right now mm-hmm. and if this if if mass exodus of these people that I used to be fans of Marty Skrull what the fuck bro you, no, you, I didn't even hear. you get accused of fucking a 16 year old and you say that it's all right because it's in the yeah. UK and it's allowed. Are you fucking out of your mind? <laughs> that, that was his that was his response. That was his Twitter response. It's legal in the UK. That was his Twitter response. To Americans. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like get him out I don't care whether I liked you whether whether you were a big thing in the wrestling business it's if you're fuck up you're fuck up and it's time to go <laughs> oh man Charlie tagging you in now uh, <laughs> anything else that's, that's left to be said from all this all, well, all I took his I Joey know. Ryan joke so I don't know all I know is I don't know what Matt Riddle did. I don't want to know what Matt Riddle did. I talked to somebody outside of our uh, outside of us that we 
talk a lot of wrestling with. And he said, dude, you're going to have to look it up yourself. Couldn't find it. All I know is it must be pretty damn horrible. Um, I hope it's not true, but Brian made it sound like it, he's fucked. It's uh, the word I'm thinking of. What? It's the word that no one wants to say that anyone ever did to a fellow human being. Okay, so did he actually commit what uh, Guevara made a joke of? It's damning. <laughs> Anywho. However, I, I'm sorry, continue. No, but not one should, no one should ever joke about rape in general, but maybe Guevara could have done a little research when he did and realized that she's related to Snoop Dogg and he could easily have the tables turned on, on, uh, on him. Just saying. Mm. Snoop Dogg knows people. Um, and Velveteen Dream just shocked and disappointed the shit out of me. Like... I heard that, and I was like, him and Sammy Guevara are so young, so young and so promising, and they just threw everything away in a matter of seconds. I'm not 100%. I actually haven't heard the Velveteen Dream one. So, Kids. Kids. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. 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 The, good, the, only, yeah. the only good that's going to come out of this is it gets rid of a lot of trash, like old and young. Because I heard there's something on Jake the Snake Roberts, which I don't even want to look into at this point. I didn't even hear that, so that's a no yeah, one. That I haven't heard either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, but, but the Velveteen Dream, it's what he was accused of in January. He was accused of it once. Every, he denied it, and everybody looked the other way because it was only one person coming out. And then when the speaking out stuff happened, about 15 other people came out and and corroborated that story from January. So, so but, but to back off of what Tarek said uh, with, with Joey Ryan, you know, the guy bases his gimmick around sex, so you know he has some yeah. skeletons in that closet. It's you, not you surprising just, that they're calling him the Harvey Weinstein of wrestling. Yeah. You just hoped that it wasn't going to be kids. Yeah. <laughs> it would be like as much of a shock as if Val Venus was in one of these things, you know? No, he's, he's, he's smoking. He's cho- yeah. yeah, right. He's smoking too much weed. He doesn't care. <laughs> but yeah, as far <laughs> as everything else goes, <laughs> hey, that would good, wholesome family fun right there. <laughs> Uh, but I'll tell you what there obviously recent history has shown that it's real easy to point at something like this and just say what the actual hell are you thinking like but in the midst of all this I feel it only necessary to obviously there's no excuse for any sort of predatory or abusive behavior sexual or otherwise in this business or else out outside of it, uh, we're talking about the Bill DeMotts of the world and just that old school mentality of, I'll tell you what, 30 or something years ago when back when kayfabe was the backbone of the business where it was an absolute necessity that you keep it insulated and you smarten up people on a very gradual basis on a worker level, then honestly, yeah, I am quite... That does, unfortunately, make some degree of sense back when it desperately needed to be protected for the lifeblood of businesses and every single one of its workers. Uh, Having worked in Greek life before in college, these, unfortunately, there is a, a purpose behind a lot of the hazing behaviors. It doesn't make it any always right. But there is a sort of twisted logic behind it. And that's why I see governing a lot of that kind of behavior. When it comes to these other allegations, whether big or small or whatever, there's obviously a lot of scum and cancer that needs to be cut out of this business that we all love so much. However, I'm going to have to propose the idea of when we're getting rid of the cancer, Let's use a scalpel to punish the guilty and only the guilty. 
let's not rush to conclusions here as heinous as these as these allegations may seem i'm going to give you a perfect example of someone who i was surprised who actually made a point one mr jim cornett have we all heard the jim cornett things yes yes we've uh the jim cornett was the was a uh, for charlie okay grooming his talent if they wanted tv time they had to fuck his wife while he watched that was the allegation that was what was put on twitter <laughs> however yeah then the dude who put it up on twitter deleted his account <laughs> so it's like it creates there, something- there are there are people plenty of people who are taking advantage of this for the wrong reasons but and- however then you go into his best friends who actually corroborate the story and are like yeah it's true and then jim Cornette goes on his podcast and says i'm charged with having an interesting sex life <laughs> I, I, so it's like jim Cornette is a character all his own whether you get whether whatever allegation you throw at him he's gonna take it and run with it <laughs> so it's that's like that's why it i've never work. i've never been a fan of him yeah, yeah it's like you don't know whether it's true whether it's not you don't really care the dude's a shithead as it is so it's like it, it really doesn't matter whether it's true or not you can believe it if it's said so it's, <laughs> but here's the point yeah. Here's, I obviously do not. I think it's safe to say that none of us are taking Jim Cornette's word at face value these days, so whether it's wrestling related or otherwise. Oh, I personally, not. as a as a fan and a historian of wrestling, I believe that Jim Cornette does, in fact, have a place at the seat of the table when it comes to discussion of wrestling, as far hmm. as the logic behind why certain things worked. I believe that he is an invaluable asset to the to the world of professional wrestling. Do I think he needs to calm the hell down and get... <laughs> yeah, he, obviously I do. I, dark side. Oh, I do agree. I do agree. He is a he when it comes to wrestling logic, he is a great mind in it. But that just doesn't take away the fact that he's a shitty character. And yeah, he's at, and it's a friendly person. Yes. And that but, that Funny that one picture of him just is a perfect example. You know the infamous that uh, <laughs> Bacha Media likes to use in their intros. But but if you look at that picture, if you look at that picture, and then you hear those allegations, you're like, I could see it. <laughs> yeah, it makes well, sense. I'll tell you what. If you haven't seen, heard the the entire extended response to it. He does break down the timeline of events where the accusations don't really hold any water. Uh, and he, most importantly of all, he, it's, it makes, he makes a pretty convincing point. He does seem to have some receipts. But he makes a good point of, if you don't like him, you can go after him. You can say whatever you want. He's a public figure. Who cares? He's used to it. Has but then he does. <laughs> <laughs> which joking. by the way he kind joking. of I'm admitted that fr- freely that him and his wife you know fool around with other couples like hey if that's so your thing he, he's the real whatever. life show if anyone actually gets that reference I, 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 <laughs> I got it the point is he was talking all about okay you want you want to take shots at me go ahead whatever Evan, sorry. but but you were also wishing death and all these horrible things over his wife when over sus- over suspicions. And unfortunately, I have to say he's got a point. Like if this is only not too long ago removed from the Hanukkahs of the world of the, that hor- horrible incident, and a lot of these. It's it's way too easy to do, of decrying bullying in one sense, until you get the chance to 
go out and cancel or dock someone that you don't like. We have way more power these days than we think we do, especially if you're a public figure with a decent fan following. There are, un- and I want to repeat for the record, there are undeniably some very guilty people who need to pay the penalty for their sins. But when it comes to this, like again, another name on the list, Mike Quackenbush. Hey, if he did some really nasty crap, then he deserves to pay for it. But in the process, he also closed Chikara indefinitely. So we have a a big-time promotion, one that was very instrumental to a lot of talents, shuddering like that. Meanwhile, elsewhere, we're talking about Sammy Guevara. Sammy and Sasha talked it out like adults, hashed things out. Sammy apologized. He's going to be doing his time. And presumably, he's going to be going back to work eventually once this is all over. Again, I heard in our exchange with uh, Jazzy Gabert, who, again, was the uh, thought she was the butt of a a whole bunch of Hitler jokes, but then it turned out to be a massive misunderstanding. We're talking about board game or something. Again, everyone, everyone hashed it out. So... All that to say, I really hope that this is where we go and not to the matter of, okay, you said or did, you made a big mistake. Now you're fired from everything forever or your promotion is done forever. In the world where a lot of wrestlers are struggling to make ends meet and trying to take bookings, I, I am not convinced that that's maybe the way to go. You know, you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. You don't want your cure to cancer to be a gunshot to the head when a scalpel will do just as well. So let's bring sanity. Let's all can we all agree to bring sanity and decency back to wrestling and punish the guilty and let the punishment fit the crime. And let's try not to get anyone caught in the crossfire. Yeah, I will... is that outrageous to say? I I will say that everything should go through due process. The allegations are out there. People are not taking responsibility for anything. So we don't really know the full story of anything that's really happened. It's like you get you get the story from the people making the allegations. And then the person who who the allegations are made of is like, that never happened and all that. Do the due process. As, as the WWE said, suspend them until you can do the full process, the due process. And if it comes out that it did happen, then okay, you got to go. <laughs> but don't just, don't just fire them because it was said. That something happened. <laughs> Scott Tark, you got something. It leaves me... We'll end this discussion on one real scholar's quick talk that I have for you, gentlemen. We have, I have in mind a different kind of uh, allegations, but it's still relevant to these times, and that's the one with uh, Tessa Blanchard getting fired from Impact Wrestling and being stripped of the Impact uh, Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. So with her allegations of racism, do you think it's going to be hard for her to actually find work, at least when it comes to the big wrestling organizations? She could probably still find work in like the low-key independent shows, but do you think that these allegations are going to hurt her finding something like going back to WWE, which in that they, she even rubbed people the wrong way there, and... Of course, her being icy with impact led to her being fired there, and I don't, I don't see her joining AEW because of the whole racism allegations. Do you see her just it, at least? Where, where do you see you? Where do you see her going? Like you guys think? I can see her staying in Mexico because at this point, okay, it's it's not even the racism. That all, all you got to see is how she handled herself 
her last little bit of time and impact. The reason she was fired wasn't because. Oh, of it's not because the of the allegations or it's anything like that. She, she was asked no. to do something. She was asked to send in promo work mm-hmm. during yeah. the during the during the break, and she refused to do it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I that, I know. Yeah, that's so, absolutely right. So it's like that equates to an attitude problem, which AEW and WWE are not going to take. So should, you can you can cross them off the board right now. It's it's not a smart move to bring her on if that's the way she's gonna act, and then you add on. <laughs> To that, yeah, I think her best bet at the moment is staying where she's at. I uh, and I got two words for her: don't care. <laughs> okay, Charlie, you got anything? Like, read the room right now. No one's gonna be like, "Look, part of the reason this woman was fired was for being racist." But like, oh wow, perfect! It's 2020. We're not going to hire you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, damn shame. But what are you going to do? No offense. Besides, well, your your answer actually was the best one for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I don't follow Tulsa Blanchard's career. I, love I don't answer. watch Impact. And let's be real, we got we all collectively have a whole lot else to worry about mm. other than Tessa Blanchard, who does not seem to in- inspire confidence with any of us at this point because we, we still have to deal with the COVID-19 situation and apparently so does WWE there's been 20 something cases 24. 24 cases now it came out that Kevin Dunn was expressly forbidding people to wear masks during filmings and if you saw Smackdown now everyone's wearing masks. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, everyone's wearing yeah. masks except now. for Eric Bugenhagen. And and breaking news, if you haven't been reading the internet at all today, uh, the WWE, other than the people who have already done it, because Renee Young doesn't care, okay? If they get rid of her, she's so entrenched in the wrestling business right now, she could have a job over tomorrow. <laughs> So uh, Kayla Braxton isn't going to give a shit because it's the second time she's had it. So she could she so she could really give a shit less about having a job right now. And and producers aren't going to give a shit. Adam Pierce and Jamie Noble don't care. <laughs> so they already put it out on Twitter. But apparently the WWE is expressly forbidding their talent from making it known publicly that they tested positive. Oh, jeez. Like, there's an email. Like, someone leaked the email that the WWE sent its talent, and it's damning. (laughs) But I thought Renee came out about it. Renee did come out of it. Oh, okay. This is their response to the people coming out about it. And, and oh, she's, okay. and, but that's why I said she don't care. They yeah. Can fire her tomorrow, they can fire her tonight. She'd have a job tomorrow. <laughs> so that and it's it's the way that the WWE has handled this entire situation is so bush league. Like I know it, you want to talk about amateur hour, okay? The the, the WWE treated this. Like a tiny little indie federation that just opened and has no idea what it's doing. <laughs> That's how the WWE has treated this whole thing. And it's like, and, and 24 is just the number right now. Okay. A lot of people that tested negative in the last couple days have turned positive. Yeah, because so, the tests you, don't aren't exactly the most accurate when it yeah. comes to their results. Yeah. Twenty-four was the base number, 
Okay, it's looking like it's more like 30 to 40. Mm. Because false positives are starting to chip, are starting to turn now. And let's face it, okay, Renee Young tested positive. Okay, Moxley tested negative during the one that he just took. The day that she found out that she was positive. I guarantee you within the next week, he's going to test positive. Oh, absolutely. I think so, too. I mean, her first test, she tested negative, and then she took it again, and it was positive. So, yeah. yeah and they live together. They're in the mm-hmm. same state. He goes to AEW once a week. Other than that, he's in that house. <laughs> and uh, if, if his so- personal uh, escapades are to be believed, apparently they are... Uh, also getting it on in quarantine constantly, so... Exactly. So, let's face it, okay? He tested They don't call him Titty Master for nothing. Yeah. He tested negative yeah. one. He ain't gonna test negative again. That's it. So, the WWE, in their bush like this... Okay, and let's face it. A bunch of their talent has outside relationships in the wrestling business. So... It's like, you're not just affecting yourself. You're affecting the entire business with your stupidity and and ineptitude. Okay, and now the news is coming out that they're getting ready to let fans in the building. They're ready to go out on the road and let fans in the building. I will say, however, having been out and about... I understand you. Hold on. I, I'm just going to put this in the matter of a scholar's quick talk. Because of what we've been seeing, again, we're all East Coast boys, New York, New Jersey area. Because we've seemed to be seeing the worst of it, and we've seen how people are responding, so to speak. Scholar's quick talk says, if they opened... If they opened the show and it went on the road and it opened shows up to the public again, do you feel comfortable? This is a two part. Do you feel comfortable attending a live show? And if so, in what context and what conditions? Hell no. no. Hell no. Absolutely no. not. I have no confidence. If they open the show t- uh, today and they say, oh, you have a special VIP ticket to be front row. I still wouldn't take it. Yeah, no. Absolutely. And I, and I know the only reason that Jeff is going to say yes is because he has SummerSlam tickets. No. <laughs> this is true. Incorrect. Incorrect. Not ne- not even necessarily just because of that. And I just, I want to get the ba- some bang for my buck. I am, if I'm going to say yes, I do feel comfortable, provided that the circumstances are right. It seems to me that like a lot of people are getting the message that yeah, you need to wear a mask. It's fine. People can be social distancing. I've been seeing some arenas and show places that are at fifty percent capacity, and people are properly spread out. That, if done that way, I can see that. I can see at least even if it's not the best circumstance, I can still say that. I would honestly feel comfortable doing it if in that particular situation. I'll, I'll say, I, I'll I say, wouldn't want to risk the health of my kids. I'll, I'll say the caveat. For I'll say the caveat. Okay. That's I, fair. Wouldn't That's fair. Com- I would not feel comfortable going to a WWE show knowing how they've treated this whole thing. Mm. AEW? Indies, GCW, did you see that? Did you hear about that one? They did it in a park and they did social distancing and they cleaned the ring after every match and they showed it online. And I'm like, okay, that's the way you do it. AEW, the way that they've been doing it, the way that they've been doing their shows, that's the way you do it. WWE can fuck off at this point. The way that they've treated everything. No. And Charlie, final thoughts? I, I heard one thing on the news this morning, and it was all that I had to hear about. It's ending anything anytime soon. Uh, it was for the Kentucky Derby, and it said that 
The arena that it's in usually fills in the uprights of hundreds of thousands of people. Due to what's going on, it's been limited to 60,000 people, and masks are optional. Let that last part sink in. That's not handling things properly. Masks shouldn't be optional when you're in the uprights of tens of thousands of people. Uh, I feel that WWE would do the same thing. WWE is not going to do outside shows with social distancing. WWE is going to slam people in like a sardine can and, and tell them that masks are optional. In that case, I would, I would not go. Would I go to an indie show like, like Brian was, was talking about, an outdoor indie show with social distancing? I'd think about it. It depends on who's on the card. But WWE right now would not be a safe environment. I don't, I don't, I don't feel Okay. Well, now that we finally got all the the bad news out of the way, <laughs> let's get to some hopefully uplifting stuff here. And talking about the hot off the presses, it was confirmed last Sunday at the conclusion of the Undertaker documentary, The Last Ride, that as it turns out, yes, indeed. The Undertaker's last match has taken place, and he is, for all intents and purposes, officially retired. I'm still not convinced. Okay, Brian, you said you saw that you saw the last episode of the last ride. Yeah, I'm. I'm like very emotional. All, all of it. The, the five part, the, the series, all of it. Very emotional. Very well done. Uh, I enjoyed getting to getting a look into the mind of Mark Calloway. Not like he finally was not kayfabe. If we're if we're talking about the business that way, like you finally got like a full documentary, full interview. Like he's going on tour right now as Mark Calloway as The Undertaker. So it's like, it's nice to see him out of the character and just as the guy and just going through his career and all that. So it was nice to see that. But at the same time, they're playing it up so hard everywhere that I'm not convinced. <laughs> well, like, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. After seeing it and seeing the way everything was framed, as, for as much love as we all have for The Undertaker and just how well it was executed, if you would ask me a week before, I'd say, if they're going to... If they're going to bring him back for one more match or one more anything, it would have to be a Boneyard style or Firefly Funhouse style encounter with the Fiend to do just full on character work. It's the only thing that they, I think, that can do justice. After seeing all that and just seeing how satisfied he was and rewatching the boneyard match again and seeing how well everything came together not just on a technical level but also on a character level i honestly feel like this this is it this is just leave him alone let him have his moment and not for nothing on a personal level just seeing this whole thing it honestly reminds me of my dad like Mark Calloway reminds me so much in a lot of ways of how my dad was. So I'm just like, that again is like, there's too many good memories there. Like, yeah. That, that, and in all honesty, this is the one of the reasons why I even wore this jersey for this whole night for episode 300, because this, this jersey was the very first souvenir. From my dad, from the very first Raw that I ever attended with you, Fool. This was, again, he was the type of the guy who didn't give a damn that he was buying his his child son a, a shirt, a jersey that says suck it on it. That's the kind of guy he was. And, and I just got a tap on the shoulder. I'm glad you're here. Dick, dick. <laughs> <laughs> 
wait, what? Yeah. It's like, he was like, yeah, I'm glad you're here too. Tap, tap. <laughs> I mean, but I'm serious. It was a, it was a great memory. Oh, and yeah. I know Absolutely. that for someone like the undertaker, I mean, he, he touched the lives of people and fans. Just like, we're just two, we're just four of many. And I feel like after all he's done, the least we can do as fans is, is just to say in one unit in, you know what, Taker, we love you. You deserve to ride off into the sunset. And it's like, hey, if you've got a satisfied mind and a satisfied bank account for all the work that you've done, then, you know, Godspeed, sir. I, I will say that I did appreciate, and, and this is what actually got me thinking it was real, when he was doing that interview and he, he started talking about Kobe and he saw that and was like, all right, I could go at any time. I should probably start spending more time with my family instead of, in, instead of doing, getting prepared for matches and all that kind of deal. I will say this, if the Boneyard match with AJ Styles was his going away party, was the last thing we ever see him in, like, that, if it wasn't against Kane, that was, the, that would be the way that I'd want it to go. That, like, that was, if that was his last match, after what happened with Goldberg, after everything that had been going on the last few years, where let's face it, he didn't have a good match. Mm-hmm. Is that okay for for a while? And if that's the way he's gonna go out, that fantastic boneyard match, which I still say is the best uh, cinematic match we've had this year, then uh, yeah, yeah. Real quick, I I have heard that that idea of. Kane being Undertaker's last match. Again, I think you've proposed the idea on more than one occasion, Fool. Uh, I'm just going to put it out there. My opinion is that probably would have been the right call if it had happened maybe five or ten years ago, Undertaker's retirement match. But given the progress of both Kane and Undertaker respectively, I feel like respectfully that ship has passed and this is a pretty much as good of an ending to the undertaker's in-ring career that we're ever going to get yeah Tarek and i had a plan for uh kane versus taker and the uh the year after paul Heyman, not paul Heyman, paul bear paul bear yeah <laughs> passed away it's like you just have the urn in the middle of the ring Kane does his fire thing. Undertaker does his arm thing. The lights go out. Everything's gone. And that's the last we see of all three. That's the last we see or hear of all three of them. <laughs> Charlie, any follow-up thoughts on The Undertaker and how? what do you think is up for next for him? Uh, I, I, think he's done, I think he's done for good. Um, I don't know about you guys, but, like, when I heard that, like, there was going to be the five-episode thing, I was I was rounding off, like, what pay-per-views were coming up and, like, mm-hmm. if that was going to be the last match. Because I honestly didn't think WrestleMania was going to be his last match. But um, I think it, it was very tasteful how they did it. I, I enjoyed part five of the documentary as, as much as the other parts. And I honestly, if I had the time, I'd, I'd go and sit down and watch them now, like, all the way through one to five, but unfortunately that's not an option. Um, I did love the idea of a Firefly Funhouse match for him, and I do think if the money's right, maybe, just maybe in the future, and then you might even see Kane intertwined with that as part of it, and they could both go out that way, but who knows? I think that has about as much chance as, like, Taker's thing right now. Um... I heard an interesting bit today on a podcast. Uh, it was Bully Ray talking about his thoughts on uh, Taker AJ Styles. And he was saying that 
he, even as a wrestling fan, he, he knew that it was just way, way wishful thinking, but he was hoping that when the lights went on after uh, Taker's pyro and the fire and all that went off and he uh, drove off on the motorcycle, that Sting would be standing there in the light holding a baseball bat towards the screen. But that would have mm. been sweet on the roof. Um, wait one second. This stupid clock is going off again. Okay. Sorry about that. I muted it before when it was going off, but I can't catch it every time. Um, yeah, I think it was tastefully done, and I think they did it the right way. All right. Full closing thoughts from you on The Undertaker and all that applies. Well, I've only, I'm only up to part two of the documentary. The last thing I saw was him prepping for his match with Cena and wishing it was a little longer and him apologizing to Roman about how their match was just fail for him. So I haven't seen like his reactions to basically the Saudi Arabia matches. And to be fair, I think his, his expression when he faced Goldberg was more than enough. <laughs> Um, but it is actually funny watching that documentary and actually really hearing Undertaker speak in his real voice. Cause even, even before, even like when I was just younger, I always thought, Oh, when he's just a normal guy, he's still just, that's just how he sounds. He just sounds <laughs> like this. <laughs> he just sounds like this. He goes to Barbara King drive through. I need a Whopper please. And a large fries. Yeah, pretty much. I just always assume, Oh, that's just how, that's just how he talks. Uh, but when it, when it comes to, will he stay retired? I think he wants to, it's just the question on, will Vince let him stay retired? That's always the million dollar question. He's damn well better. Well, he does you may say, like he wants to. <laughs> he, he, you, cause Hey, if Vince was able to get Sean out of retirement, you know, ne- it's you never know. And Which was admittedly a big mistake. Considering, especially considering how, oh yeah, but that's not stopping Vince. What this, what these last couple of years have, sh- at least this past year and just alone has just shown me, is that it's like at least when it comes to at least Vince, it's just. The man, I, I just, I have now just completely lost respect for Vince, just from what he's done to XFL and with the XFL and just how he's shown lack thereof of uh, preps for his wrestlers and his staff when it comes to COVID-19. But when it comes to Taker, yeah, I, I truly believe he wants to stay retired and it, it only if the situations were right and the circumstances are right i could see him coming out the only the only uh, way i would actually see him going out is putting over bray because that's i'm glad if i'm if this is his last i'm glad he's able to drive off into the sunset good but it's just uh it's also the other side of that coin where the it was always the wrestler Thing of putting over the younger guy, ending your career on your back. Yeah, putting on the back, uh, putting over the younger guy, which showing that, uh, yeah, that, that, that didn't happen. Uh, does AJ Styles need that one win? No, but I would say if anyone deserves it, it would be Bray. But if Undertaker does stay retired, I wouldn't be more happy that he is doing it out of his own like his choice. So mm-hmm. I guess what I ha- could end it with, I guess I'm looking forward to uh, shedding a few tears when I watch these last few parts. Of oh, no, last you're going like to ball like a baby, sir. Oh, I believe it. Oh, yeah. But either way, we'll see for sure. But otherwise, we can re- at least appreciate a great high point for one of the to end the career of one of the best of all the time, the best to ever do it. Now we move from the wrestling business to this actual show. Of course, we cannot talk episode 300 without a little self-reflection. 
Uh, if you've been along for us for any length of time, or even if you just stumble across this YouTube channel randomly and just said, hey, this is a lot of episodes, what the hell? We've we've come a long way and we're we don't see we're gonna be riding this thing until the wheels fall off. So before we get to the end, let's we already lo- are looking at Christmas present. So let's look at Christmas future for a little while. Yes, we're going out of order, but I don't care. It's not a straight one for one. Oh, we've changed a lot in the course of doing this show. From doing live internet radio to doing a straight up audio podcast to doing this video show to doing this video show and a podcast. We've been all over the place and we're still going. So in a few words or less, when you when all of you looked ahead to the future of the Scholars of Wrestling show, we've done a whole lot of things. We've done prediction shows. We've done prediction games. We got actual championship belts which look amazing if i had to put out the idea to all of you when you look at the future of the scholars of wrestling show what are the things that you like the scholars of wrestling show to do in the future expand upon when you look at what is the future of the scholars of wrestling show in your eyes let's start with scholar Tarek. what is the future of scholars wrestling show and what do you want to see happen well, when I look, when I start looking back on what we've done over these last few years, I think I'll just start off with saying my favorite memory, like my favorite moment. So, uh, my one particular moment that just keeps coming back and <laughs> just keeps putting a smile to my face. And it's the SummerSlam prediction show we had a couple of years ago. <laughs> Brian knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> just, Kind of just ripping on you, fool. Um, when we were telling the <laughs> telling the prediction of whatever the match Randy Orton was in, I don't know who he was facing at that time. I just always remember we were discussing just how the build on that story and just how we how I just talked about it, uh, him just hiding behind the curtains, spying on whoever it is he's stalking, touching his penis, <laughs> 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 and of course, bro. Your response is like, this feud is just show me something that I haven't done, that I haven't done ever. And I was like, you touched your penis for the first time? And I just broke out laughing. <laughs> now I know why I have no memory of this. 300 shows. That's his takeaway. Wow. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Welcome to just the us, show. Just, just right. the humor of us ripping on each other and Jeff realizing he can touch his penis for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, but what I, what I want to, of course, what I want to see more when it comes to the future of scholars of wrestling. Of course, I just want to just uh, try and add uh, more content to the show. I guess just uh, maybe more, just like little side little side shows instead of just our episodic show. And uh, the one thing I, I definitely, I definitely want to look forward to having uh, in the future of the show is one of you guys actually rising up to my standards of being an undisputed scholar because there's only so long I can actually stay on the top of the mountain by myself for so long, of just being, of just being the best. Of the scholars of wrestling show okay can i go next just as a direct response to that nonsense <laughs> all, right, <go> ahead. <laughs> all right well on a more serious note one of the if we're talking best memories of the show thus far i've said it's i've said it for a long time it's for me personally it is the community and the camaraderie that has surrounded this show that I've cherished the most. And if I had to pick some of my favorite memories, that's it's always been the prediction shows have always been a big time highlight for me personally. It's always been a ton of fun. It, if we go back further, 
I think back to one big moment that stands out to me is way earlier, like during the first like live po- live radio days of when we first got started. For some reason, I don't know how this come up came up, but at the end of the show, we just ended up going off the air to dancing to Macklemore's Thrift Shop song. And that was just, it was stupid it made no sense we probably Wait, get in trouble uh we da- the, we signed off the show by dancing off to uh oh, macklemore's cool. thrift shop oh <laughs> i don't know talk about t-shirt the our favorite uh, wrestling shirt. yes yes thank you <laughs> that was, yep that was the episode <laughs> Yeah. Wow, we've but, actually uh, danced off to a couple of episodes. We even got in trouble dancing off to the too cool theme. Eh, whatever. <laughs> we got a co- we got a copyright slap on that one. Did we really? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't okay. see that. Oh yeah, wow. we got in tr- we got in trouble for that episode. <laughs> okay, breaking the law. All right. Boys. But <laughs> all right. But in all seriousness, when you dance off to too cool after uh uh uh, Brian Lawler passing. That was it. Was the episode dedicated to him? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But in all seriousness, when it comes to the future of the Scottish Wrestling Show, one thing I've always loved is the fantasy sports, the the prediction show aspect of it, and just and the community that, in, that comes with it. So I personally would like to put more effort, if possible, to expanding the the prediction show atmosphere and the, the fantasy games. Uh, given that this year was the 10th anniversary of the Royal Rumble game over Facebook strictly, a lot has changed. And after putting together the, the Royal Rumble game in that format, uh, it's probably the Royal Rumble game as we know it is probably going to have to be discontinued. In its place is probably going to be a new format for the game that will probably carry over to all the other fantasy games and prediction shows and games that we run under the Scholars of Wrestling banner. You may have seen it sort of beta tested early at earlier points in the year. So I'd like to really see that expanded, maybe with some sort of online leaderboards and easier to use mobile friendly methods of doing it but this is one thing i would love to see happen in the future and just grow going forward scholar brian there will be the royal rumble game it just won't be in the usual format with the with the same rules it's been the facebook style of game has been going on for a decade i think it's time to retire that format and update it shake it up a bit Oh, good, because yes, there's oh, then you just uh, you just basically saved that dream of someone joining me up here as an undisputed scholar. Oh, uh, I didn't say the I didn't say the Royal Rumble game was not going to happen. I just said in oh. that particular context, Ooh, it's a the old the old style is done. I it's not be coming up back, here. but there will there will be there will be a game for the Royal Rumble that is not stopping. Okay. It's just not going to happen exclusively on Facebook anymore. That just Skull means it'll make it, that just means it'll make it that much easier for me to join you on that mountaintop. <laughs> join <laughs> me, January. However, if first memories, okay. My favorite memory of the entire well, two of them, two of them, because I can't not bring up. What happened last year, Charlie? <laughs> I, I can't not bring that up. It, it, it's too good. It's too good to not bring up how Charlie held the Scholars of Wrestling Championship for about how long was it, Charlie? Hey, hey, two matches, but it's what got me to the dance. So, yeah. yeah. So, so you- for about a half hour. But he's he's learned pretty well to get his mantra, so he's learned his lesson at the moment, and and then 
Going back to 2014, the feud that Scholar Jeff and I had over Daniel Bryan. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Because <laughs> this was at the point where Jeff was Daniel Bryan or nothing. A lot of people were Daniel Bryan or nothing. But but Jeff was hardcore. Mm -hmm. I did not stand nothing. alone. And it got to the point where this is where we had to come up with the uh this is where we had to come up with the uh one fuck rule <laughs> <laughs> because i went off on, on scholar jeff one one episode and it started i'm not gonna go all the way into the red but it started with me just staring at jeff going you know what Fuck Daniel Bryan. <laughs> and then about a five minute rant that still doesn't compare to Jeff's Baron Corbin and Roman Reigns rant <laughs> that's actually on the YouTube channel. <laughs> we need to add more as like standalone clips to the channel. That's what we gotta do. Le legit, it's just five minutes of Jeff ranting about Roman Reigns and Baron Corbin. It's great. <laughs> so, I think it was just. I think this that particular Roman. one is just Roman. Okay, I know there's another rant on there about Baron Corbin when he first came into NXT. I don't <laughs> think it was a. Se I don't think we have it as a separate like clip, but yeah, I do it, remember ranting. Yes, yeah, I remember the ranting too. But it, it, it just that was a fun little feud back then. Uh, back then, and and it actually started. I I think that's when the competition aspect of everything actually started coming into focus for the show because we hadn't started doing prediction shows yet, but we hadn't really had that competitive kind of fuel for the show and then when jeff and i st started getting into it about daniel bryan that th i think that's when it really started to take off for me like in like full interest wise but uh going forward um i also agree with jeff about the fantasy sports type deal uh I remember when we first started, we we had that uh, we had that predictions website. I forget what the website was, but we had like a scholars of wrestling based. I think it was like four down or something. It was four down. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's it, it's memory, one of those. I, I like something like that again because that was. Th that was fun. I do like what you started doing. I, I do like the format that we started doing earlier this year. So maybe streamline that a little bit. Try to do, try to do like a four down type thing. Uh, and I also agree with Tarek. Like uh, branch out a little bit. Like uh, have if if. If we find if if we have time and we're down, like kind of kind of make scholars of wrestling not just a show, but like a network kind of thing. <laughs> make it an experience. An experience, yes. No, no, we're not we're not bringing Jim Cornette into this. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> That's the name of his show. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I listen to it on occasion. I I, I don't want to call. I, I don't want to call this an experience. I don't want to. Do, I, I don't want anything to do. I don't want to have any connection <laughs> to that, including words. <laughs> okay, okay. I, will, I will say. I will say before Charlie gets his uh his uh ex what he wants to do for himself and hopefully scholars as well. Uh, <laughs> I will say. I do. 
I will say I'll, I'll give you each a, like a specific memory of basically a past that I will that I do enjoy because I, I said Jeff's somehow <laughs> you go back to him and his uh, Johnson and for, for Brian my, my most fond memory with Brian is going back to the going back to the beginning when <laughs> our, our podcast was live and we decided to open one episode completely Wayne's World esque and <laughs> like, you, you may realize we're on a little early tonight. Normally at this time you're watch you're listening Plant World, but they didn't want our N30 time slot. But we were able to convince Plant World into changing with Cooking World. <laughs> Only they didn't want to change at first. <laughs> White Supremacy World was canceled and all the thing and all the things worked out. <laughs> that was my favorite memory with Brian. Yeah. <laughs> uh. And with Wandering Charlie right here, be, even though he, he's still new, I will say I will he uh I haven't said this to him in private, giving him a I'll give a specific picture reaction, how he uh truly earned himself as that title of scholar by right? almost winning this uh WrestleMania this year's WrestleMania prediction show. He had a solid lead after the first night. And then of course I came back and tied with him. And of course we had nobody won the championship. So in the first of scholars history, Charlie is a reason that the scholars of wrestling championship had this vacate. <laughs> and then, of course, I, I talked to him in private. I'm like, you know what? Good for you, man. And I sent him a picture of John Cena offering the handshake to a debuting John Cena after his match with Kurt Angle. <laughs> <laughs> Giving the new, it's like the, under, the undertaker of the scholars of wrestling show. Thank you very much. The, ma the man. Of course, I was even with that, just offering the handshake to the new guy. Good job. Good job. <laughs> so, yeah. There are plenty of memories that each of you gave for this, uh, for me uh, on this show. And for that, I say thank you. Charlie? I could only pray to have the career that John Cena projected after that. That well, Undertaker. But um, less Brian cashing in Money in the Bank championships on me and more championship wins for myself so I can join Taker up there. Um, no, no. He, he's looking forward to winning the beef case so he can finally yes. cash in on Brian to get his revenge come full circle. <laughs> if the last of us talk nothing else is that revenge is wrong but fucking sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but hopefully I'll get my revenge on Brian in another sense. So, because <laughs> I think uh, number one contender Charlie is here, but we'll talk about that yeah. another time. <laughs> <laughs> I did tie with you, sir. It's keep, my due keep, talk, keep talking your shit. <laughs> I'll, I'll just bring it back uh. to last time and do it again. That's it. <laughs> Any, anywho, um, I hope. Um, I liked where you were going with the mobile idea before there, Jeff. And I think that's something to look into. Uh, and I know there's only four of us, but Brian said something about networking. And if we could do a Scholar of the Ring tournament, that would be pretty sweet. Interesting. Just bring it out there. Interesting indeed. Interesting yeah. indeed. Yeah, I got, I got a few good ideas now and then. Yes, it certainly do. Say right now, yeah. It's what got it, what it's what got you to look in the first place. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> All right. Well, on that you note, be here if it wasn't for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Seriously, if he did, if he, I didn't have that whole number one contender with him, Jeremy, Jamels, and Dave. He wouldn't have won that. He wouldn't have won that, and wouldn't have faced me for the title. And actually winning until Brian cashed in on him. So, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right, so All right. I'm not going to feed your ego more. Right. You've already well, had. <laughs> well, now that, we're, now that we're getting towards the end of the show and the thank yous are starting to roll out, there's a lot of people we could thank for getting us to this point and everyone who has made this possible. For me, I do have to say... Thank you so much to all the service providers who have made this possible. 
everyone who helped us get our start, everyone who even just inspired us to start all of this. You know who you are. Anyone who's ever listened to an episode of this show, whether it's just being like, oh, who are these weirdos, whatever, or, hey, these guys aren't bad, or just whoever you are, if you're listening to us and you're within earshot of my voice, to you, whoever you are, I have to say, with the utmost sincerity, thank you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for listening to us. This is undoubtedly a labor of love for me. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank the people who made it all of this, every single episode worthwhile, you guys. Seriously, there are a lot of other bigger wrestling shows out there, but honestly, I don't care. This is for me, it's always going to be a labor of love. And doing it with you guys makes it all worthwhile. So to you, thank you all. Of course. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Co- I'm gonna be completely honest. I wouldn't want to do this with anybody else <laughs> that isn't that isn't on the screen right now. Um, I I would like to thank. Um, I I will thank our good friend JML for giving us the platform to begin our experience with the scholars of wrestling show it didn't last very long for reasons that we're not going to get into but i i'd like to thank him for giving us the opportunity to and the platform to start this show i'd like to i'd like to thank my fellow scholar Torek for uh for the nights that we spent in front of scholar charlie's house uh apartment uh for about 20 to 30 minutes afterwards she pays her taxes man talking about (laughs) yeah talking about uh she does pay taxes yeah she does pay taxes (laughs) and shit goes on in her windows that she don't know about (laughs) that's it that's oh it. wow! Inside uh, jokes. It's not for you to get. Yeah, that. Uh, but us talking out, talking out in the street in front of his apartment uh, for twenty to thirty minutes a night. After all, basically, basically told us that if we wanted to start a show, that we'd be able to fill it. Okay, and. Thank you to Scholar Jeff to for agreeing to join us in this endeavor and become the host and a major part of the trio. <laughs> okay, and uh, thank you to Scholar Charlie for first of all being the uh, being the home base for many raw smackdowns and pay-per-views in in the uh at the beginning of this whole deal and uh for being a good sport when i did do what i did (laughs) (laughs) not taking taking i thought that was the first thing you were going to thank him for thank you for letting me cash in on you And not taking it personally and coming back for more. That's uh, <laughs> that, uh, very commendable of you, and and I th- I thank you for taking part. And uh, he is here's asking to, for more. He's asking for a title shot. <laughs> here's to many more. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right, Charlie, your turn. Thank you guys. Like you, you, you guys have been here since day one. Not just the show, but since I never hosted anything remotely with wrestling, um, it's been awesome. We've had our shows. We, we've, I've been a guest on this show enough times to earn my way on, and I appreciate you guys having me. It's awesome. 
But above all else, I, I appreciate Brian waiting patiently for the day that I'm going to get my, uh, <laughs> my comeuppance. <laughs> your, your comeuppance? Your comeuppance, huh? I'll do it again. You're it's looking cool. for his comeuppance. <laughs> my comeuppance. Or he's going to get his comeuppance. I'm not getting what I meant. <laughs> Tarek, the floor is yours. <sighs> Man, it's, it's kind of hard to think of how to t- uh, think of what you guys already said. I thank, I just want to basically thank you, uh, Charlie, for having us sit in your living room that one uh, that night where we came up with this, where Brian and I came up with the scholars of wrestling. Thank you, fool, for join uh, for uh, saying yeah, I'll definitely do it with you guys, <laughs> and. Uh, well, thank you, Brian, for uh, coming up coming up with the idea of the scholars of wrestling in the first place. And who would have thunk it when we were discussing writing it all down on paper that it would eventually come to how how it is now? And I just can't wait to see what we can do with this show in the future. Yeah, like with I said, I every, can... with every idea that we that we've said. I would like. I can't wait to see how and if it comes to light. Oh yeah, like like you said, I can doubt unless we are physically unable to do it. I think we're going to be riding this train till the wheels fall off. But with that, that is our show. That is episode three hundred. So now it is time when we turn it over to you, our wrestling listening viewing audience. Wherever you are, all across the internet, we want to hear from you. Let's keep this conversation going. What do you want to see out of the Scholars of Wrestling show? Any favorite memories if you've been watching us for a long time? What is going on with COVID and wrestling and The Undertaker and all that good stuff? We want to hear from you. So drop us a line all across the internet. YouTube comments, our Facebook page, whatever. Including our personal favorite, our personal Twitter account, starting with at Scholars OW for all the latest episode uploads, including episode 300 right here. You're going to see it all there. And if you want to join the conversation in a more direct manner, you can get in contact with us on our Twitter machines personally. Fool, where can I reach you? You can reach me at The Avatar. Champ, where can I reach you? You can reach me at Atomic Beanpole. Hey, man, I'm a champ too. Super champ. Scott, okay, the champ Charlie. that matters is at Atomic Beanpole. Oh no! Oh 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 oh, oh man! Come on! No, don't don't Charlie. don't 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 put me down like that. Just be like the heavyweight Charlie. champion at Atomic Beanpole. Charlie. At Charlie. At Charlie. And you can reach me at I'm Robbie Rage. Join in the conversation. Hey. You've already seen us. You already know who we are after 300 episodes. Hope so. We are the Scholars of Wrestling. And with that, you have just been schooled. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Thank you all for checking in with us. Thanks for 300 episodes. And stay in tune with us for 300 more. And we'll see you for whatever comes next. Take care, everybody. Good night. <laughs>